Dear students, now we are going to solve one problem in Smith chart. Determine the input impedance and standing wave ratio for 1.25 lambda long transmission line at the sending end with the characteristics impedance Z0 is equal to 50 ohm and the load impedance ZL is equal to 30 plus J40 ohm. Okay, so here we are going to find out the input impedance and the standing wave ratio for a given transmission line. So first we have to write the given data. Z0 that is the characteristics impedance is equal to 50 ohm. The load impedance ZL is equal to 30 plus J40 ohm. Then the length of the transmission line is 1.25 lambda. Okay. So next we are going to start the procedure to find out the input impedance and SWR using Smith chart. Here the first step is to find the normalized load impedance. So for getting the normalized load impedance, we have to divide the load impedance by its characteristics impedance. So here ZL by Z0 is equal to 30 plus J40 divided by 50. We can get the normalized load impedance as 0 0.6 plus J0.8. So here the normalized load impedance value is 0 0.6 plus J0.8. This is the resistance value. This is the reactance value. Okay. So in the next step, we are going to plot the normalized load impedance on the Smith chart at point P. Okay. And then we are going to draw the impedance circle from the origin O. For this, we can take the Smith chart. So in this method, first we are going to plot the normalized impedance. Okay. So for plotting that normalized impedance, we have to take the resistance value as 0 0.6. Correct. So here this one is 0 0.6 resistance circle. And then we have to find out where the reactance value that is 0 0.8. Correct. So in this one, the reactance value is plus J 0 0.8, we have to plot the point above this x is equal to 0 axis. So where the point 0 0.8 here? So this one. Okay. So in order to plot the normalized impedance, we have to consider the resistance circle at the point 0 0.6 to this 0 0.8 reactance. So here this is the normalized impedance value. Is it L by Is it now? You will understand this one, this point. Okay. So the next one, we have to fix the origin. Here, this is the unique impedance circle because R is equal to 1. So this one is denoted as O. Okay. So from this, o. we have to make a line to this load impedance. This load impedance is named as P. Okay. Do you all understand this one? So, so we are going to draw the line from this O to this P. Okay, so and consider that as a radius and draw the impedance circle for this transmission line. Okay, so here we can use the compass to draw the line. Okay, so consider this one origin and then this as a radius. Okay, then we have to draw the circle. Okay, so once the circle is drawn, that is the impedance circle with this radius. In the next step, we are going to extend this line. Okay, so in the next step, we are going to extend this point P to the outside layer which represents the lambda. Okay, so the outside layer represents what? The wavelength value. Okay, so that is nothing but the length of the transmission line. We are going to extend this point P to P dash. Okay. So here it is in between 0 0.12 to 0 0.13. So in between we are having four lines. So each point is the 0 0.02 value. So it is in between the second and third point. Okay. Consider this value as 0 0.124. Okay. So this is the point from the origin to the load impedance. So load impedance is present at this length 0 0.124. Do you all understand this one? 
In the next step, it is very important from this impedance circle, we can straight away find out the value of SWR that is standing wave ratio. So, standing wave ratio is directly calculated from the intersection of the impedance circle and the x is equal to 0 line. Okay, you can straight away find out the SWR value as 3 from this circle. So, in the next step, we are going to find out the source impedance that is input impedance. They have given the length of the transmission line that is 1.25. So, in this one, this is the load point. From this load point, we can find out the input value. So, here the length is what? 1.25 lambda. Okay. So, we are going to find out the 1.25 lambda from this load point. If I am going to complete the entire circle, that is represented as 1 lambda. So, 1 lambda means the complete circle. So, we are going to add only this 0.25 with this load impedance. So, 0 0.124 plus 0 0.25, we can get 0 0.374. So, from this one, we have to take the clockwise direction where the 0 0.37 lambda is available. So, here you can see 0 0.34, 0 0.35, 0 0.36, 0 0.37 and 4 means this is the point. Correct? So, this one is 0 0.37, 372, 374. So, this point, from this point, we are going to draw. So, this is the point. From this, we can draw the straight line to the origin. You can see this. From this point, we can draw the straight line to the origin. It will cut one point in this impedance circle. So, this point is known as the normalized source impedance. That means input impedance in terms of normalized value. So, all the values are normalized in this mid chart. Okay. So, here how do we find out this value? We can take the reactant circle. So, we can take this um, scale outside. You can see here. So, this reactance value is, what is this value? Its value is 0.8. Correct? But it is in the downward. So, we can say minus J0.8. Okay? This one. And we have to consider this circle. Okay? So, this circle value is what? 0.8. So, we can say 0 0.8. Minus J 0 0.8 that is nothing but Z S by Z naught. It is very simple. Okay. So, from this we can get the value of this input impedance by multiplying this value with this Z naught. Okay. So, it is very simple one to solve this mid chart. Okay. So, let us revise the steps again. It is very simple. Only three steps are there. So, first we have to plot the normalized load impedance, then we have to make a circle that is called as impedance circle. Then we can find out the SWR value from the circle and then we can extend this point P to P dash where we can locate the load impedance. If the length is given, we can take the source impedance from the clockwise direction and locate the length. From the length, we can draw the straight line to this origin. So, the intersection of the impedance circle and the line that is nothing but the normalized source impedance. From this, we can get the value 0 0.8 minus J 0 0.8. Okay. After solving all the values in Smith chart, we can come to this procedure and we have to write the SWR value as 3. Correct. So, next we are going to draw the straight line that this OB is extended to P dash at point 0 0.124 here, correct 1 to 4 lambda and rotate in a clockwise direction with respect to the length of the transmission line 1.25 to get the normalized source impedance that is input impedance. So, here it can be located at the point 0 0.124 plus 0 0.25 that is nothing but 0 0.374. Okay. In the last step, we are going to find out the input impedance 
From the Smith chart, we can get the value Z S by Z naught is equal to 0.8 minus J 0.8. So here we can move this Z naught to this side. So we are going to multiply the given value with the characteristics impedance 50. Then we can obtain the input impedance as 40 minus J 40 ohm. You will understand this one.